It's right here in Brooklyn, on Church Avenue, there's a famous hall called Woodbine Ballroom. And there we see big men standing in cliques, reminiscing and talking about the great and the famous Barnum. While their wife on the dance floor, dancing the night away to the famous music, Sexual Healing. <laughs> oh, Barnum the Great. He was born on February 20th, 1923, to schoolmaster James E. Burnham and Rachel A. Samson Burnham in Kitty Georgetown. Burnham received his primary education at a Kitty Methodist school, where his father taught. In 1935, his secondary education started in Georgetown, first at Central High School, then at Queens College, the country's premier secondary school. At Queen's College, Barnum won three scholarships. The Centenary Exhibition in 1936, the Government Junior in 1937, and the Percival Exhibition in 1938. Barnum, Lyndon Forbes, Samson, was a Guyanese politician and the leader of the Cooperate Republic of Guyana from 1964 until his death in 1985. Originally serving as Prime Minister from 1964 to 1980, then at his first Executive President from 1980 to 1985. He's often regarded as a strong man who embraced his own version of socialism. Throughout his presidency, he encouraged Guyanese to produce and export more local goods, especially to the use of state-run corporations and agricultural cooperatives. Despite being widely regarded as one of the principal architects of the post-colonial Guyanese state, his presidency was nonetheless marred by repeated accusations of Afro-supremacy, authoritarian rule, state-sanctioned violence, electoral fraud, and corruption. In 1964 election, Jagas PPP won the highest percentage of the vote, 46% to PNC 41%, but it did not win a majority. Barnum succeeded in forming a coalition with the United Force, the TUF, which had won 12% of the vote and became Premier of British Guyana on 14th December. On the 26th of May 1966, British Guyana became an independent country and was renamed Guyana from G-U-I-A-N-A to G-U-Y-A-N-A. Because Chen Jagan's radical view, which reflected communism and his alliances with the Soviet Union and Cuba, Boredom was propped up by both the American and the British governments to assure the propagation of U.S. and British control within the region. At first, Boredom pursued moderate policies. But when, in one of his first acts in independence, he passed a sweeping National Security Act, giving the police the power to search, seize, and arrest anyone virtually at will. The Preventative Detection Act to ensure that Guyana has a peaceful time in which to sort out our plans for development. We must put our enemies on notice that subversion and terrorism will not be tolerated for a moment. A New York Times quoted him as saying, in defense of the act, he won full power in 1968, although many condemned the election, election as fraudulent because of a large number of irregularities, such as questionable numbers of overseas voters on the roll. In 1970, he viewed sharply to the left and, as, and established strong relations with Cuba, the Soviet Union, North Korea, and communist countries. On the 23rd of February of that year, he declared Guyana to be a cooperative republic. Adopting policies of our Turkey, he banned, not really banned, but he put some restrictions on imports into the country, including flour and a variety of rice that had been integral part to the diet of the Indian citizens. Burnham also nationalized the major industries that were foreign-owned and controlled, reducing the private sector share, 
or they can be to just about 10% in 1979. He's a real boss. In 1974, Barnum declared the PNC to be the paramount and socialist. He won 1970, he won a 1977, 1978 referendum, which made it much easier for the government to change the constitution. And anecdotal evidence from hundreds of Indigenous and afro Guyanese who are PPP supporters claims that PNC enforces aggressively and violently deny PPP supporters of the opportunity to vote. Most notably, official figures show the referendum passing with an impossible 97% of the vote. In 1980, the constitution was changed to make the presidency an executive post. But on one election, became president that year. Bonham introduced mass games to Guyana. They were for sale in February 1980 to commemorate the founding of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. In seeking further sources, much needed revenue, Bonham struck unusual deals. Such as the one with the controversial religious leader in San Francisco named Jim Jones who had a large African-American following. In 1978, Jones paid Barnum's government two million US to lease 4,000 acres near Port Kaichubo, where four years later, the mass suicides of the People Temple occurred after a US congressional delegation arrived to investigate human rights abuses. And Leo Ryan, a California congressman was gone down. Bonham must be credited with a remarkable number of developments. Nevertheless, the national emblem, the flag, the golden red, the coat of arms, the anthem, the land of Guyana, the grave, the Kanji pheasant, Guyana National Bird. Who don't know about the, the, the Kanji pheasant? The national flower, the Victoria Regia lily, one of the largest of its kind in the world. And the motto one people, one nation, one destiny. National development in education, health, housing, pure water, and electric electricity supplies. Youth schemes accelerated when Barnum headed Guyana's government. Major construction work such as the Suzak Linden Highway or Linden Suzak Highway, the West Demerara, Quarantine, Madio, and the International Airport Temeri were completed. The Demerara Harbor Bridge, reputedly the world's longest floating bridge, a textile mill and clay brick factory became operational during Barnum's tenure. A national insurance scheme, the Guyana Defense Force, the Guyana National Service, the Guyana National Cooperative Bank, the Agricultural Bank, Christian Law, Labor College, Kurukuru Cooperative College, and the National Culture Center, and a host of other enterprises are among institutions established during Barnum's time in office. As a Caribbean leader, Barnum, Forbes advocated regionalism, non-alignment. He made Guyana one of the original members of the Caribbean free trade area, CARIFTA.